back around yeah. They thought I was down, but look at me now, look at me now. They tried to count me out, How? but the math ain't to the exact amount they don't add up. This is the theme you heard for anyone who's ever been through yeah. The train off the track, but you cling to Hold it on. Time to show them you ain't out of steam I want it all, the whole thing Not a piece of the pie I'm gonna ball for the whole game I don't ever get tired Ooh. When the stakes high, you can see me putting work in This week on Titans All Access, the boys are back in town. And when you're talking Titans football, we have to talk with the man himself. Head coach Mike Vrabel, Julio, is here to show age is but a number. How does this sound? Ryan Tannehill on the mic. Running backs coach Tony Dews on the mic. General manager John Robinson on the mic. Coming up on Titans All Access. The monster, Derrick Henry, sacked, Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house, Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to St. Thomas Sports Park, in particular, the bubble. Titans all access at training camp with Amy Wells. I'm Mike Keith. We're glad to be inside out of the heat and glad to be back at training camp. Oh my gosh, Mike Keith, it feels so good to be back at St. Thomas Sports Park, back around real football and real players on the field. It's great. Okay, so the players and the coaches are getting ready for the season at training camp. How do you use training camp? I use training camp to get to know everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity to see who's on the field, who's going to be on the team, get to know them a little bit better, establish those relationships, and learn their jersey numbers. Kind of like number two, Julio Jones. That's a good one. Yeah, he's a good one, all right. The Titans acquired him back in June from the Atlanta Falcons. The future Hall of Famer is part of this ball club, and he's been a big part of training camp already. And we're talking about age is 32. Like, I'm young. Like, in football, you can say it's old, but you either do it or you don't. This game don't change for me. I'm still fast and still strong. And to, you know, the games last year, I just, you know, had an issue where I didn't take enough time to heal up properly. There's no excuses, things like that, but I'll be ready to go. So for those who are questioning my health and things like that, just stay tuned. 32 doesn't sound old to me. It doesn't sound old to me either, Mike. No, it doesn't. And especially not when you've got someone throwing you the ball like number 17. Yeah, Ryan Tannehill is 33 years old and right in the prime of his career. Had a chance to watch him work during the off season and Number 17, Ryan Tannehill, is the unquestioned leader of these Tennessee Titans. Right. Papa Kern. Nice and soft for him. Kern, are you lost? Are you lost? All right, Kern, Kern doesn't even bring a helmet off. He's like, yeah, he must just be bored, honestly. Jerome, no gloves? Not even for the drill. You sure? No balls on the ground, Jerome. Oh, get out there, Jerome. Jerome! Oh! Have a day, have a day. Got 12, here we go, fellas. Catching everything now. Playing fast, be decisive. Hey, be decisive, attack the football. Be decisive, attack the football. What? Out of way, out of way! Out of way, Marcus! Way not to rush it because you beat him. I know. All right, Tommy. Hey, you see him kind of shuffle his feet. Gas that thing. Still to come on Titans All Access, the vets work away from St. Thomas Sports Park. As a matter of fact, in Cali, Jayon Brown and one of the newest Titans, Josh Reynolds. Speaking of receivers, let's meet one of the rookies, fourth round pick out of Louisville, Dez Fitzpatrick. I like to model my game after Devontae Adams. You know, I think we have the same, you know, structure, body. I think we have 
you know, a lot of the traits the same. Obviously, I need to get to where he's at, but that's definitely somebody that I try to model my game after and study. Throughout the pre-draft process, you do a lot of selling yourself, describing yourself as a player. How do you describe yourself as a wideout? I like to say I'm a, a player of the game. I think my football IQ is definitely high. I like to just say that I'm just a complete receiver. You know, I can block, I can catch the ball, I can run after the catch, I can do, you know, the little things, and especially blocking and, you know, just catching and route running and everything. So I like to say I'm just a complete receiver. I'm, I might seem a little cliche, but <laughs> I like it. going to be on a big stage and you'll be able to come to my show. In partnership with the Governor's Early Literacy Foundation, the Titans rookie class read to a group of children at the Nashville Public Library Bordeaux branch in June. The event also featured a Q&A where Titans rookies revealed their favorite books and gave suggestions for developing good reading habits. To have our players out here to inspire the kids with their, their thoughtful answers and, and to share their love of reading, I hope it makes an impact on the kids who are here to hear it. It's so awesome to see the Tennessee Titans rookies, their newest players, getting involved in the Nashville community so early. And that's important to so many people on this Tennessee Titans team, especially Derrick Henry. Yeah, Derrick Henry is big time in the community. How big time? Well, the Tennessee Sports Hall of Fame recognized him as their Tennessean of the year not just for the fact that he went for over 2,000 yards last year, but what he did off the field. And for Derrick Henry, it's important to be a superstar in both areas. To be able to help the youth level the playing field of, for the youth and uh, really just be, be a helping hand any way uh, the two all foundation can, you know, just to help the youth, help them grow. I have ideas that I want to do, you know, just, just being there for the youth, being a helping hand in any way possible. Um, I've done uh, my cause, my cliques, my uh, foundation two years in a row, um, inspired by my by my grandmother. So, you know, just want to be a helping hand to the youth. I've done things in previous years, but really want to get some events going so kids can look forward to it and be able to uh, impact the kids in a positive way. Now we're all hoping to see Derrick Henry be just as successful this year as he was last year. And someone who's really hoping to contribute to that is the second round draft pick for the Tennessee Titans, Dylan Radins. O-line. He's an offensive lineman, Mike Keith. That's right. You do know these guys. And you know he went to North Dakota State, and that was a big choice for him. He was really excited about that. Here's him talking a little bit more about that choice to play for North Dakota State. Now, you could have gone to an FBS school, but instead decided to honor your commitment and go to North Dakota State. Why did you make that choice? One, because I verbally committed so soon, which was fine by me. I'm a man of my word, so when I say something or put my name on a dotted line, I'm going to follow through with it. So my mom taught me when I was younger. I verbally committed so soon just because they're a winning program. They offered me a full scholarship. I never even realized that I wanted to play college football until I was like, okay, they're going to pay for college. And then the O-line coach I absolutely just loved. He was a great father figure of mine, and they just sent uh, Billy Turner and Joe Hegg to the league. Joe Hegg just won a Super Bowl with Tampa Bay, so I knew if I put in the work, I'd be able to uh, pursue my dreams and go to the next level. Now, you were a pretty good defensive lineman in high school. Why make the switch to offensive line? Yeah, I don't know. They just saw me as a more athletic, taller guy. I was like 250 in high school, and they're like, hey, that's the way North Dakota State likes to develop guys. They're going to develop guys into offense linemen. They don't want to necessarily recruit big offense linemen. Plus, the U of M is there, so the U of M takes a lot of the big recruits. So just developing uh, skinnier guys in offense linemen has worked well for them. That's what Joe Hag did. That's what Billy Turner did. That's what I did. Just going from a skinny guy to a bigger guy, uh, they know your foot quickness is already there, so they'll just put weight on you, and they'll turn you into a great offense lineman. In your heart, though, are you still a defensive lineman? I think right now it's weaned out. Like, I've definitely bought into it, but I, I know when I first went there, I was like, God, I hope they move me to a tight end or a defensive end or something like that. Hopefully I don't have to gain all this weight, but eventually you grow into it. You find why you love doing it. It's a great brotherhood being part of an offensive line. We're a bunch of goofy guys, so overall it's a fun time, and I've definitely bought into it. There were some signs, but I had no idea. And honestly, when they called, I was sitting in the car because I was starting to get a little irritated with the draft. So you went to your car. That's your safe space to get away from the draft? I mean, I had been watching it because, you know, they prolong it because they talk the whole time and they do commercials. So I had to get away from everybody. I was sitting in the car when they called. Did you have to go back inside and tell everybody that you were being drafted or did you wait and let them see it on TV? So two of my good friends that I grew up with, at first I was one, but they came and sat in the car with me. So they're right there when I got the call. Oh, that's cool. What a cool moment to share with some of your friends. Yeah, it was. It was crazy. And, you know, it was a once in a lifetime opportunity. Welcome back to Titans All Access. 
You all know that Mike Keith has been with the Titans organization for approximately 300 years. What you don't know is that he's never watched a practice from on the field. He's always been on the sidelines. So we changed that this year and we sent him out onto the field with Titans general manager John Robinson so that he could watch a practice and learn what's actually going on. So we are going to bring this experience to you in a segment that I am affectionately calling Giving Mike Keith a Hard Time with John Robinson, presented by Dunkin' Donuts. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Can you tell how much a player's improved from last year based on this work? Nah, a little bit. I mean, the ultimate is going to come when we put the pads on, you know? There you go. Now we're dialed in. Mid net from 44, I like it. Did you ever kick? A lot of sirens. I was the backup kicker in high school. Longest field goal you ever made? Probably 48 yards. Wow. <laughs> 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 Gotta get to the sticks on third and six. Third and six, you need seven, right? Well, no, you need six. If it was third and seven, you'd need, you need seven. seven. Yeah, I, I mean, I, but you would at prefer, third and six. A third and six, you would prefer to have seven. Because then there's Yeah, no a, a touchdown. Well, that'd be six, two points. Then we got to kick the extra point. That's where we're we going, Joe. We're going that way. Okay, beautiful. Get to go to my spot. Does Tannehill do a good job telling these guys what he wants? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Coaching guys up, what he's looking at. Hey, hey, way to keep playing, right? You didn't get the release you wanted, but you just kept pressing with strength, right? That's a nice job. Oh, snug window. Snug window. Snug window. I don't hate it. You don't mind that he threw that? I like it. I mean, he trusted it. He trusted it was going to be there, and Perp was going to make the catch. I don't know if we're going to win any Emmys for this little piece here, Mike. You don't think so? Well, I don't know. Maybe a Dundee? A Dundee. I think that we should watch Mike Keith get roasted by John Robinson once a week. I don't know who I talked to about that, but I think we need to incorporate that into this program. But two people we do not make fun of here are Jayon Brown and Josh Reynolds. They are very important parts of this Tennessee Titans team. And this off season, they spent some time in California getting their workout on. They had to get ready for this season. And so we followed them out to California to watch how they prepare. Is this the best spot to work out at? I feel like every year I get better on the field and, and stronger and I don't trust nobody else to do it, but come here, I gotta come home, back to California and get this work in. Just about every year I've, I've been in the league has been a prove it year, so, you know, excited to, to mesh with the team and uh, and do my part to get us to that Super Bowl, man, and that's that's the ultimate goal is get, get them Titans to the Super Bowl. Yellow, let's go, red, come on, you got it. Good, let's go, one, easy. Oh man, offseason's been great. Coming off an injury with the elbow. But as you see, it ain't gonna be no problem. I'm excited to go, uh, you know, get out there with my teammates, have fun making plays, and, and win a whole lot of football games. I'm excited to get it going, man. Tighten up. The Titans rookie class stopped by one of the organization's youth football camps earlier this summer. They participated in drills, signed autographs, and took pictures with all 135 kids who attended the camp at Page High School in Franklin. Over the summer, the Titans welcomed more than 600 kids to their five camps throughout the greater Nashville community. That's a ball! We just out here playing football, seven on seven flag with you know some of the youngsters around uh, Tennessee and. Uh, it's just a blessing to be out here because uh, I look at a lot of these guys and see myself when I was younger just having the opportunity to come back and give back. It's been awesome. Join the millions of Titans fans who are doing their part in the fight against COVID-19. Get vaccinated. It's free. It's safe. And it's available in your community right now. Give it a shot. We welcome you back to the training camp edition of Titans All Access from the bubble here at St. Thomas Sports Park. 
Now, you know Mike Vrabel is a very busy man. After all, he is an NFL head coach, the head coach of your Tennessee Titans. But Coach Vrabel was kind enough to take some time to go around the field with our Amy Wells for an update on his offseason. Don't take anything that we do out here for granted. Don't take this opportunity for granted here. Don't take practicing, stay with each other and getting better at building a team. Mike Vrabel. Hi, this Amy. This is your fourth year as an NFL head coach. Can you believe it? It goes fast. I can believe it, but I, but I do recognize how quickly it goes. What do you wish that you had known in year one that you now know in year four? That COVID was going to actually be a thing. Really? Well, I mean, I don't know. I think we, we didn't know that when I got hired. Would you have still but, done it? <laughs> yeah, I still done it. I think you just realize you have to be flexible. You know, eight hour games in Miami, you know, just everything that happens on a daily basis that comes up that you have to be ready for when you deal with, you know, 90 players and, and 20 some coaches. Does it feel good to be, we're not completely back, there's still protocols, there's still things that have changed, but more back, back to closer to normal? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're back, you know, I mean, we're practicing and, you know, hopefully we're going to be able to, to get into the stadium to be around our fans, unfortunately, with the construction. You know, that can't happen at training camp. That will certainly feel normal. We're moving forward, and I think that that's a testament to the players, the, the league, and the Players Association. You've had winning seasons every year as a head coach. Obviously, when you're starting a new season and you've had that kind of success, there are some expectations. Sure. How do you manage that? Well, I think you want to manage them, but I think you have to also try to raise them and say, listen, whatever we did last year, or however you coached or whatever good plays we called, however you played or whatever successful plays you had, we have to be better than that. And we have to be better each and every year. And you know, that's why we come back to this, this area here, which is training camp, to, to build that, to build that foundation and to continue to raise those expectations. We understand that you know, they're, they're high. They're high for everybody in the National Football League. So you, you can manage them, um, but also understand that they, you, know, you have to be better than what you were you know, the year before. This is how we practice, okay? This is what the expectations are, okay? And the ones that can battle through it are gonna be the ones that end up sticking around, helping us win, developing a role, okay? Because they have a foundation. Always good to hear from Titans head coach, Mike Vrabel. Speaking of coaches we like to watch, we enjoy following running back coach Tony Dews anytime in practice. You'll see and hear why after the break. But up first, Titans third round pick Elijah Molden, a defensive back out of Washington, tells us about his favorite TV show to watch, and it's one of ours too. Is it true that you are a huge Ozark fan? Oh, big time. Really? Yeah, it's probably like my favorite show, Ozark. I got my parents on, I got a lot of friends on it, so. Okay, yeah. what is it about that show that you like so much? It's just creative. And I love, uh, God, I'm blanking on his name, Bateman, what's his name? Jason Bateman. Jason Bateman, I love Jason Bateman. Touring Nashville is always a great way to send off the rookies once the offseason is over in June. This year, the Titans rookies got a chance to make their own hatch show print while visiting the Country Music Hall of Fame. They also stopped by the newly opened National Museum of African American Music. I have been fortunate enough to tour the National Museum of African American Music, and as Nashville stops go, it is right at the top of my list. Really? It's it is at the top good. of my list. It is that good. You need to go see it if you're visiting downtown Nashville for sure. Oh, absolutely. And a Titans coach that you always want to see work when you get the chance is running back coach Tony Dews. He's Derrick Henry's coach. Yeah, he's kind of a big deal. He's kind of a big deal. He's got a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of pep in his step, and for him, it's all about the work. Set the tone, Tutu. Say hit. Ah, ah, quick, 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 quick. Ah, work. There you go. We got to work. Say hit. Ah, work, 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 work. Ah, make sure your footwork right. Yes, sir. We're making all them cuts. We're making all them cuts for North and south, homie. Cover the front tip. Eagle club. Back tip in the crease. Here we go. Say hit. Let's work at it. Ah, work. Don't give it back. Don't, uh oh, uh oh. Oh, now you act like you know what you're doing. There you go. Get it out. Get it out. All right, a break over. Here we go. Going back. Take go. 
Ah, ah, ah. Who's the best one? We say Jeffrey the best. Oh, hell no. Rashawn the best. All right, so Jeffrey Rashawn, go. That's good technique right there. Set, go. That's good technique right there. Uh oh. Keep it oh, on. Come on, Rashawn. Work at it. Tony Dews, super guy, better coach, proud he's part of the Tennessee Titans. Absolutely. But Mike, why are you holding this box? You're usually standing on a box. Short it's true. joke. Even though I'm her personal wine caddy, because this is the box that you will receive if you join the Foolish Club. Ooh, tell me more. It is a wine club that the Tennessee Titans have partnered with Fairwinds Estates Winery in Napa Valley, California. And it's going to be something really, really special in terms of wine. The name itself is already special to our organization because our founder, Bud Adams, along with Lamar Hunt of the Kansas City Chiefs and the other founding AFL owners were known as the Foolish Club because there's no way they can take on the NFL and be successful. Well, they were, and now we have a wine club named in their honor. And that's such a cool thing. People who become a part of the Foolish Club will get two shipments a year of this wine. And it is a collection of premium wines. This isn't regular wine. It is Titans branded called Rough and Dressed Napa Valley good quality wine and the labels all represent something that's special or important to the Titans organization or to Nashville. Really a cool thing to be a part of and it's limited. So you've got to act fast. Go to foolishclub.com. That's where you can sign up and part of the proceeds go to the Titans Foundation which supports so many great causes all over the place. So the foolishclub.com, foolishclub.com. That's where you're going to be a part of this. I'm in. I'm going to wrap up the I show. I did it. Now, for Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. More Titans All Access coming your way the weekend of September 12th when we open the regular season against the Arizona Cardinals. For Amy, I'm Mike. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next month.